coming. Um, and I want to go ahead and introduce our city manager, Chris Whitaker. If you want to go ahead and, and give us an update and tell us what, what's going on here in the city. Great, thanks, Gina. Thank you. Hey, uh, first of all, thanks for Gina you know, for allowing us to host this. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity, great partnership, um, and. I'm not a salesman by trade, but here I am. We're kind of selling Angleton. Uh, Jason Perez, our mayor, I wanted to be here, but couldn't. He says hi and greetings and regards and all those kind of things uh, that he normally does. And he does it in a much better um, fashion than me. So I apologize, you're kind of stuck with me. Uh, the slides uh, that, that we're gonna just run through here kind of real quickly, and then I'll open up for questions at the end. Uh, put together by Martha. Amy, she's our communications, marketing, business development. Uh, you got a couple other titles there too. You know, land acquisition, <laughs> whatever person uh, for the city. Uh, but this is, we're using these slides as part of our corporate tour. And so we went down to Port Freeport uh, a couple weeks ago and, and sort of gave them what's going on in Angleton. And so we're gonna go to down BASF and we're happy to come out to other organizations and talk about what's going on in Angleton. Uh, sometimes we get overlooked because we're not sitting next to Dow or BASF or whatever. Uh, but there's really a lot going on. Um, is you know you probably notice notice houses going up and people moving here and, and those kind of things. So it's a great place to be. It's a great uh, time in Angleton's history. Uh, it's kind of the pivot point. I think we're you know I think we're going to change and we're growing and you know so how does that all? Uh, impact us as residents and, and business folks. So, all right. So, uh, north is to the left side of the chart, south is to the um, right side of the chart. Uh, these are all the major developments in Angleton. And so, this is not every development. Uh, if you go over by the rec center over here, there's two houses being built on, I think it's Lori Lane. Uh, Couple streets over there's a single house being built on a vacant lot, uh, and that's happening all over Angleton. Uh, but these are probably the there's about ten major developments uh, over by the high school. It's uh, blowing and going over there. Uh, if you go up the street here, there's Greystone, and that's uh, big seventy foot lots over here. You go to the next street over, that's Riverwood. Uh, that's happening with a couple hundred uh, lots. So it's happening everywhere, and so on the in the gray boxes are the uh, developments and the lots, uh, number of lots uh, for each of the developments. Uh, and they're in various stages. So Austin Colony on there on the west side, over by 288, that's probably the most uh, recent one. And they're, they're getting ready. They're finalizing their development agreement with the city. They're getting ready to uh, uh, you know, get, get the lots uh, uh, developed for infrastructure and then you know, maybe nine months or so, they'll have uh, houses starting on the ground. So they're all in various stages. You drive around Angleton, everyone's like, hey, so what about this development over here? And I'm like, well, which one? You know? <laughs> uh, but uh, that's just the ones that are like, they're, they're happening. Uh, so that's about 2,000 houses from 50 to uh, 70 foot lots. Um, some of them are mixed developments, meaning uh, they've got 50 foot lots, 60 foot lots, 70 foot lots. Others are in the 45 and 50 and 55. And so um, it, it depends on the lot and the developer and all, all that, what's going in. Uh, so that's just, again, what's on the ground. There's all, all kinds of developers uh, circling. Uh, we, we've got a developer we're talking to on uh, 288 and uh, 523. Uh, we got a developer we're talking about on 35 and 523, uh, you know, mixed use, multi-purpose, commercial, residential, retail uh, kind of mixes. And so they're all kind of circling, seeing what the deal is, seeing what they can develop, what the council wants. And so as those uh, become firm and they agree to come here and, and we can provide the infrastructure to them, uh, then, then we'll add them to the mix. But that's 2,000 houses right now. That's you know whatever the number you use, 2.6, 3.6 people, uh, and that includes apart apartments too. So you know you think about the number is about 5,000 people that we expect in the next three to five years as they build out. Uh, right now, 
I think this year alone we've had about 120 houses that have been built in these various developments. So that's a 20% change for Angleton over the next three to five years. Uh, so when you look at, uh, you know, and, and they're not, and what we think is it's not folks, you know, I live on Canaan right down the road here. It's not me going to buy a new house over there. A lot of it's people that are retiring from other areas or upgrading. It's first time home builder, first time homeowners and those kind of things. So it's really gonna change the demographics of Angleton uh, as far as who the residents are and what they want. Um, if you're following Angleton News, you know we have this great debate about what developments are in Angleton and what size lots we should have. And so that'll continue to influence what developers come and what they do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat on my notes here. So, uh, Tuesday night, it'll be a presentation by Sky H2O. They're coming to Angleton. They bought a piece of property out by the Kubota dealership on 523. And they're coming with this unique uh, technology uh, where they take the 98% humidity that we have, you know, 90% of the year, uh, and they take it and put it to the right dew point and compress it, and they make water out of it. And so, for those of you who have lived in this area, you know that we have a hurricane, we have a tropical storm, we lose power, which means we lose water, or we have a bowl of water notice like we did in September of 2020 with the bacteria down in Lake Jackson. And so what do we do for at-risk residents? What do we do for city employees so we can keep them at work and uh, they can serve the community? Uh, so this, te this technology is coming out of California uh, they're at the Kubota dealership on the little access road there by 288. Um, they hope to come in with 17 to 30 jobs um, and create like a drive-through retail. And so you could drive up with your five gallon container or your one gallon container and they'll bottle water a lot cheaper than they, they say that other bottled waters are. Um, so that we can be resilient during a, a hurricane or a tropical storm or some other unforeseen event that uh, we seem to have had a lot in the last couple of years. Um, so uh, we have a lot of housing developments that started really about three years ago. And three years ago, there was nothing and there was all this talk and whatever. And everyone said, oh, Angleton's not gonna grow. Well, I mean, it's here, it's happening. Uh, but there's been sort of a philosophical uh, switch, I think, where uh, we acknowledge that having rooftops is good, but also having retail and commercial and industrial are, is important. Uh, because what that provides is, you know, we, the AISD, we spend a lot of money putting, you know, kids through school to graduate, and then where do they go? Yeah, they go to Lake Jackson, they go to Sweeney, they go up to Houston, they go whatever. So, for the money we're spending and investment in our kids and our families, we ought to provide that opportunity for them to live here. And um, so some of that will some of that will materialize with the growth piece because that's what retailers are looking for. They're looking for the numbers that they can say, hey, Angleton's out 25,000 and they're in a different category. Um, and we're starting to see that. We're seeing, uh, we had Burks come in a year or so ago. Uh, we had Wingstop come in in the last year. Uh, if you haven't heard, Starbucks is coming in over in the Specs uh, parking lot over there. So things are happening because of that headcounts. We're talking to HEB, we're talking to all those organizations, you know, kind of jumping up and down saying, hey, development's here, you know, please bring your business uh, to Angleton. And so there's a lot, of, a lot of good things going on. It's just a lot of, some, some of it's talk, some of it's action, some of it's future stuff that'll happen. Uh, but again, we're really shifting our, our focus toward industrial commercial. So when we have these developments come in, like on the on 288B, you know, we say, hey, what are you bringing in commercial? Are you putting in a restaurant uh, place out there? Or are you bringing in a doctor's office? Or are you bringing in something else? So we get those jobs and those services uh, that we want. Everyone says, well, can't you offer clothes in Angleton? And, you know, again, what we hear is you're not big enough and you're not beating that cap yet. But once we have those rooftops on the ground, then, then a lot of that will start coming. Okay. 
So this is the new uh, cell side LV storage tank um, off of Cemetery Road there. I don't know if you remember the old one, built in 1976, it had the big four columns. In fact, during the winter storm, uh, we had a leak in the water tower and you had this big frozen stream that came out. And, you know, it was kind of cool looking. Um, I'm always a positive guy, so I said, hey, we can make that a tourism event. We can have like, you know, the polar swim. So I said, you can have the, the polar shower into the water tower. Um, that didn't go over too well. But, uh, but this is a new tower with our new brand. We rebranded Angleton uh, last year. And so you finally tore down the old tower. And this is an increased capacity and readiness for the city of Angleton. Uh, so again, that water tower should have probably come down about six or seven or eight years ago. Uh, the, the city before me finally got a bond and put it in, in progress and we just finished it up. Uh, so that's that's the way we're thinking is we got to get rid of some of the old stuff so we can remain um, functional in the city. Uh, we've had a bunch of road projects. If you go down uh, Valderas, uh, Southside, Richmond, uh, a couple other roads, we've got uh, four more roads that we're going to come in and do in the next uh, year, year and a half. And those will all be concrete roads. And so we won't have to worry about re-asphalting them every couple years. Uh, they should last 20 to 30 years. We also have a partnership with the uh, county. They do uh, overlays for us. So if you see some of the new pavement uh, going in and around the city, we get about two miles of pavement. We pay for the asphalt and they've got all the equipment and they come in and give us exactly two miles worth of uh, overlays in the city. Uh, AMI meters. So we have this new technology. It's an automated meter uh, in the past, we had to send people out to read the meter in front of my house and your house. And then they got out of the truck or car and they walked and they flipped the cover. They wrote the number down. They walked back to city hall. They inputted the number. They calculated your bill. They sent you a bill. You paid your bill, whatever. Now it's all automated. So we don't, we don't have to do anything four times a day. We get an electronic read sent to city hall with what your usage is. And so, gets rid of that, that manpower, gets rid of that, uh, that uh, inaccuracy of someone writing a zero instead of a one or 10 digits instead of nine or something and takes away a lot of the friction. But now it's all on the portal. So uh, you as a, a business owner or a, a residential customer uh, can pop up your own water bill um, and see what your usage is. You can set alerts. I set mine just for fun when I first got the account and I set it for like you know, 100 gallons or something like that. And I got an alert in the middle of work and I'm like, hey, there's no one at home. Are my dogs turning on the faucets? You know, what's, are the goldfish drinking more water? I don't know what's going on. Um, but I had left the garden hose on in the back because I was watering the night before. And so I got this triggered alert saying, hey, you met your triggered usage. And so there, sure enough, I went and turned it off. Uh, so, it's really cool technology and helps people understand if they have a water leak, sometimes you have a runny toilet and you don't know it until 30 days from, you know, when, when our guys went and read it and then they process it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we did a levy project around our wastewater treatment plant with the drainage district. You know, flooding's an issue in 2017. The water came up within a foot of the top of the levy. And if, if the wastewater treatment plant goes out, we're all in trouble. Um, so we raised it about uh, six feet, uh, put new fencing in, we're gonna do a lab renovation down there, uh, but we're really trying to think about how we protect ourselves and, and be resilient. Uh, along with that, uh, about two years ago, we started with, uh, when we had one of the potential hurricanes. So when we lose power, we lose water, uh, we have about uh, 90 people that we monitor on the state steer list, which is a, um, sort of a critical family list and people can sign up to be on that list and if they're on that list they we get told who they are so when we have a hurricane we have a potential evacuation we can check with them to see you know how we need to assist them and so we turn the rec center sort of into a cooling or, or warming shelter so that um, now we have uh, generator capacity uh, we're looking partnering with sky H2O to have water made there all the time, we've got showers, we've got charging stations, uh, those kind of things. 
so that we can be resilient for those folks that really need it. And in fact, uh, a couple of these cold mornings ago, we had uh, a neighborhood that lost power. Um, and so we allowed them to come and hang out in the, in the rec center and put out cots and the charging stations and those kind of things. Because um, it's, a, it's a critical thing and there's just really no, there's no shelters around here um, to do that. So we're trying to be resilient. So it's been in the news, we, you know, we're claiming credit for it, uh, but really didn't actually find out until the last minute. Um, so Tesla came and installed a, a battery uh, park on the West, West Live Oak uh, Street on the, on the west side. There's a smaller battery park not associated with Tesla over there also, uh, but it's cool technology, you know, as, as we lose power in the grid, this is an opportunity for us to remain resilient um, with uh, stored energy. And so, um, just like I talked about the rec center, um, you know, I'd like to say we had everything to do with that. It just kind of, you know, popped up and they picked us and, and that was great. Uh, but it's, it's, you know, it's definitely cool technology. Uh, we're doing uh, solar lights, solar street lights. So if you go down Dallas, South Side, uh, Houston Street, uh, we put up solar lights. <coughs> so if you, ask, if you ask Texas New Mexico for a light, you know, it's gonna cost you $2,000 for the pole, it's $104 a month for the light bill, um, and they gotta go dig up people's yards and put wiring in and, and all that kind of stuff. And so we talked about this concept of doing solar street lights. And so we, you know, if you look at Dallas Street or some other streets, they've got street lights on the corner, maybe in the middle. What we're doing is sort of augmenting that. And so we're experimenting with uh, technology and we, we tried some poles and we found some better poles that we're going with now that'll help uh, light up the very dark streets. We're also using that technology at uh, Freedom Park. If you go to the track around there, on the north half, uh, we've got all solar lights uh, to mark the trail. Uh, this year, we'll finish that up with uh, more solar lights. And the, you know, when I first got here, everyone's like, "Man, that place is dark." I live over um, in summer house apartments, and you know, you can walk the trail during the daylight, but man, it's pretty dark out in the back, like northwest corner out there. But you know, great feedback from the residents that they like it, and they've always said we need to put lights out there. So instead of some expensive process, we found a better way to do that. Uh, so, uh, you know, under attractions, uh, uh, we have a lot of things going on. Uh, concerts in the park, um, which we do twice a year. And then uh, market days, which we had to kind of put on the COVID hiatus and, and not do it, but it came back with a, a boom. And so we had, uh, what it was 13,000, Martha? Yeah, we're, we're just swinging back up to um, about half of our largest uh, gate was about 19,000 um, in 13 hours, and we're back up to about 10 to 11,000 so post COVID. So it's climbing each show. We've had two shows, and we're having another one in March. Yeah, so we have like 220 vendors. Uh, we've got this huge waiting list of people that want to come in. Um, and this year we're partnering with the Six Gun Shooters. And it's kind of like this, uh, they're shooting cap guns and balloons off of horses. Um, and so they're gonna do that while they're doing market days, which will kind of be a neat sort of multi uh, facet event. But we're always trying to um, swing it, things that uh, bring people to Angleton. Uh, we're doing this uh, kiosk uh, from this company called Sufa. We're gonna put out hopefully by the Angleton Chamber. And that's gonna be a list of restaurants, it's gonna be uh, parks in Angleton, things to do. Um, so that's, you know, we're using tech, hopefully technology to help um, tell people about what's going on in Angleton. Uh, Martha put together a cool map uh, about everything that's going on in Angleton. You, we get lots of um, uh, intentional visitors, meaning tourists. Then we get unintentional visitors, which usually go like to the courthouse or something like that. <laughs> but, you know, hey, while they're here, go have a coffee at Wakey Wakey's, um, go visit a restaurant, go hang out at the park. Uh, all those things are very important. It's going the wrong way. So this is our, um, I wanted to say newest park, but it's actually old now. Um, <laughs> It's uh, Lakeside Park, which was our newest park. It's off of County Road 44, as you're 
Um, headed out of Angleton. It's by Heritage Oaks um, uh, subdivision. And so this is what it will look like um, conceptually uh, when it's done. And so it's really about a pavan, it's about walking trails, it's about nature. Uh, there's an alligator in the park already, so, um, you know, it's, uh, if the alligators want to stay there, I need a new pair of boots and uh, we'll take care of that. But, um, it's, it's underway, they're, I think they were pouring the parking lot uh, this week. Uh, they're working on, on the pilings for the pavilion. Uh, it'll have playscapes, it'll have musical instruments donated, donated by Rotary. Um, so it's gonna be a really cool park on the, on the west side of Angleton. The newest park uh, is Southside Park. And so really what you had on the south side of Angleton uh, was two things. The, out by the American Legion was the old municipal pool, which we tore down about two years ago. Um, and then you had the dog park over on uh, Anderson, just south of the railroad tracks. And if you all notice the old municipal pool area, it's not a very big area. And our park standard is five acres or more. So we don't, we can't use less than five acres because of parking, because of amenities, because of all those kind of things. So if you look at Freedom Park and Freedom Park North, uh, uh, those are all more than five acres. And so uh, we just purchased land, what, two weeks ago, Martha? And so we're gonna maybe get rid of the old municipal pool site. Uh, maybe we'll do some consolidation at the dog park. Um, but this is gonna be a great, it's located right at the corner of Cemetery Road and uh, Anderson. And so it's, it's a great location. It's an open area on the Northwest corner we hope to maybe splash pad, maybe a couple other things, uh, walking trails and stuff that go into that park. Uh, you got Freedom Park, everyone familiar with Freedom Park or by the high school? So just across the canal is Freedom Park North. And so as Windrose Green development, uh, the development east of the high school develops out, they're uh, digging a bigger detention pond over there. Again, that'll be a pond and a walking trail and sort of a natural thing that will connect to Freedom Park eventually with a, a bridge across it. So uh, on the upper left is Inside Angleton. So that's our uh, semi-annual magazine that goes out. And we talk about sort of the big projects or catch you up on some of the updates. We talk about city employees and what they do. Um, on the right, we talk about the, our water bill through the AMI um, meters, and, that, and that's been a, again, a great thing. Um, we're, we're in the education process on that. So we're doing public service announcements, we're doing all kinds of advertising to get people to realize what we've invested in technology-wise. So it's not just for the city, it's for the residents and their businesses. Uh, we're doing some crazy things, like with TikTok and doing some public service announcements, because uh, really it's about you know, how do we get the word out? When we communicate uh, across the city, so we, you know, we put stuff in the backs, we put stuff on our Facebook, we put stuff on the city website, and, and I always get those comments like, well, I don't, we don't look at our city website. Well, okay, that's why we do the Facebook, and that's why we do uh, Code Red, which is one of our newer things. That's our emergency management system. So you sign up for Code Red, and we have a hurricane coming in, or we tell you you're out of water, you can get alerts uh, through that. It's a pretty pretty cool technology that comes out in a text and an email. And uh, Glenn Lomont, our emergency manager, he's the voice of Angleton for that. So you get to hear his voice and um, talk about you know what we're doing. So as we roll into the hurricane season, we're going to start next month. There'll be public service announcements coming out on Code Red, like about hurricane preparedness and get ready for the season. And you know, here's how we can help. Yeah. So uh, that's all I have. Are there any questions that I can try to answer for you? Okay, you mentioned how you can program, you know, um, an alert for your water if it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do you do that? Where do you go? You get so so you, you just go on, if, you, if you're a customer of the city of Angleton, you just log into the account just, um, and you can set alerts and you can set like daily uses alerts, you can set amount alerts. Um, again, I experimented. I just put in 100 gallons just for fun, just to see what that meant. 
Um, so I get I get monthly alerts too, like hey, you've met your monthly um, usage, or whatever. So if you're used to so much water per month, you can set that in there, look at your, looking at your history, and it'll give you all the bars and graphs about what you used last month to this month and a year from this month and, and those kind of things. And that's on the website, on the city website? Yes. Uh -huh.